gentleman over there. If one looks at countries such as Iraq and Afghanistan, is the real question whether they intervene or not dependent upon our knowledge of the complexity of that country and the, and the tribal, linguistic, clan divides within it? And I remember from my time in, in Saudi Arabia, the Bedouin saying, I against my brother, my brother and I against our cousins. And I think that becomes the sort of defining factor. So the less complicated, the more ready you should be to intervene. Is that the yes. principle? Rory? Um, I, I think that's a, a really important point. I think this is fundamentally about knowledge. The point about what's gone wrong with our foreign policy, the point about the fashion for intervention is that it's made us very inattentive to the details of countries. The point is we should have intervened in Bosnia. We should not have intervened in Iraq. That's what I think most people in this room feel. And what we're struggling towards is trying to understand what the perils of intervention are, how it is we can learn to recognize where you should intervene and where you shouldn't. And that isn't fundamentally about your view of the dictator. It's not fundamentally about your view of whether what the Chinese are doing in Tibet is or is not wrong, whether what the North Koreans are doing is or is not wrong. Burmese are doing is or is not wrong. It's fundamentally a question of whether we can do good by intervening, by putting our troops on the ground. And that's about knowledge because we're so hypnotized today by a sort of global generic knowledge. I mean, we talk very confidently about the rule of law, governance, human rights, civil society. But we're very, very bad about thinking about it in a specific context. What does the rule of law actually mean in an Afghan village? Is there a judge there? Is there a policeman there? Is there a court there? How are disputes actually resolved in 25,000 villages in Afghanistan? Once you answer those kinds of questions, your sense of what you mean by the rule of law changes. Your sense of how you're going to spend your 400 million pounds on your rule of law program changes. The kind of people you employ change. And your judgment, and this is what it really comes down to, your judgment on whether you continue to do what Petraeus wants us to continue to do, which is to keep 150,000 soldiers in Afghanistan and spend $150 billion a year until we've got to a situation where we have a credible, effective, legitimate government and we've defeated the Taliban, or whether, as I believe, we should begin to start drawing down now. All of that depends on knowledge, knowledge of the specific. David. Well, of course, it's very difficult to argue against uh, having as much knowledge as you can. And one of the things that is painfully obvious about the uh, intervention in Iraq was the low level of the knowledge that was possessed uh, practically uh, about the society. And that can't be again said. The thing about Afghanistan, and, and this is something you have to recognize, was we did not choose Afghanistan. Left to ourselves, we would never have intervened in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, Afghanistan, through the, in the form, uh, through, through the form of their guests, Al-Qaeda, chose us. That's how it happened. And we were then left with the question of, did we take out the government of Afghanistan because we thought that that was a necessary lesson and because we thought it was necessary to it not happening again? And if we did do that, were we then responsible to a significant extent for what took its place? Funnily enough, Rory and I agree about that. Um, the question then was whether we had sufficient intelligence, used sufficient intelligence about what came next. Um, quite possibly not. But the fact of the intervention itself is not in dispute. And in a funny way, Iraq chose us as well, because in the, in the post-9-11 world, the question was whether or not somebody like Saddam would be allowed to continue in defiance of UN resolutions. This was the, uh, the, the, the belief that both Tony Blair and uh, George Bush had. And they David, could... can I just interrupt? Sure. Sorry. We, my, might, we, might, we might use this as an opportunity, given the fact that we're running out of time, for you to continue on this line and to make this your... Well, your peroration, uh, and then we'll in that case, my it. closing peroration is this. Here's what my worry is. I don't think that what Rory means by being opposed to intervention is what, by and large, people in a highly pessimistic frame of mind around the country and also in America mean 
by the perils of inter by the perils of intervention. I think he interprets it in one way, as I've seen over Libya, and I think increasingly people interpret it in another. And it is, I think, this interpretation that we are too poor, too ignorant, and too scarred by our experiences recently to be involved in trying to decide and having a strong view about how other people should be governed. I think that that is, uh, in the terms of the 1999, uh, 1999 Chicago speech, I think that is a recipe for disaster, because I, what I fear will happen is that the will, foreign policy will take the same shape for the next 10 or 20 years as it took in the interregnum between the end of the Gulf War in 1991 and Tony Blair's Chicago speech. And I think that led to many uh, enormous number of the problems that we have today. And that is what I fear, not what Rory means by his argument, but by what most people in this country will mean by his argument. Rory, your closing speech. Okay, so uh, this is a very, very interesting conversation because it's going to define foreign policy for us, for the United States, for Europe, for the next 20 years, as David said. And when we're voting, it's going to be very difficult in this debate. But I'm going to appeal to you quite nakedly to try to understand what the differences are between our two positions. Let's not get into a discussion about what intervention means, if you don't want to get into a discussion about that. Let's get into a discussion of what David means and what I mean. Right? If you listen carefully to the way that David speaks about Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya, you can hear the argument of the liberal imperialist. Right? Phrases like, I'm quoting, we did not choose Afghanistan, Afghanistan chose us. And in a sense, Iraq chose us as well. Earlier he'd said in his earlier speech, in Iraq we had run out of policy options. You know, in a post-9-11 world, it in a sense chose us. And in relation to Libya, do not, he said to those of you in the audience who didn't want to stick up your hands, do not wait to see what the circumstances are. By the time the circumstances have occurred, it will be too late. This is the logic of Blair. Blair. It's a very noble logic. It's driven by the right high moral instincts. But if you look beneath the surface of that logic, it's a logic that sees our moral obligation as almost endless. This sense that we don't choose these countries, they choose us. There is no choice left to the politician. But to choose is what we must do. And this is why, in finishing... I want to say the key point about this debate, the key point about the position I'm trying to sell here, the reason that I believe that we're talking correctly about the perils of intervention, the can of intervention, is that we don't need to feel that in saying that other people's countries are complex, are large, are dangerous, that we need to think very carefully, that we need to choose, that we need to consider very carefully the circumstances in Libya before we decide what we're going to do, that we're giving up into an amoral universe. Our moral instincts in this country are ones we should be proud of, can be proud of, moral instincts which David shares, but ought implies can. And in voting for my side of the option, you are voting for the statement that we do not have a moral obligation to do what we cannot do. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard excellent arguments on both sides, and it's clear that when asking you to vote, much will depend on where we put the needle on the question of what intervention means. If we're talking about aggressive actions against a sovereign state, perhaps more of you would be inclined to vote for David. And if we're actually talking about military invasion, outright more for Rory. In the circumstances, it's probably just easier to ask for a vote of whether you now find yourself on Rory or David's side. Those on Rory's side, please put your hands up. And those on David's, well, 
We few, we happy few. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much.